We're in the business to change people, and then they change the world. Because when you transform a person's life and let them live up to their God-given potential, you've changed their life forever. And you know what happens then? They want to change somebody else's life. Taking that first step as an individual to find out your strengths. Taking that first step as a company to find out what your people's strengths are or an organization is a significant step. But without the passion and the skills and the determination and the sense of human beings and sense of humor of the coaches, the chances of developing your full potential are not as great. This is why this is a coaching movement. And by the way, the epic epiphany was everybody needs a coach. At CSDNM, we marry the doers and dreamers. Listen to me here. The dreamers, we can see the mountaintop, we just don't know how to climb the mountain. And the doers will climb all the wrong mountains perfect. <laughs> just marry the doers and dreamers. Marry the doers, that's what you do. When we're at our best with companies, we're marrying strong on strong. I'm going to tell a story that I've never told before. I grew up in a little town called Brownwood. My mom was a teacher, my dad was a salesperson. Um, my older sister Susan Spence, she was four years older than me, was born with a birth defect called spinal bifida. Does anybody know what that is? Back in the early, late 40s, the average age, basically spinal bifida is a birth defect where all the nerves that are supposed to go to your legs are balled up on the back of your spine in an open wound. And the average age was four months, maybe 10 months. And my sister lived to be 49 years old. Every day, I pushed her to school in her wheelchair. I pushed her home at lunch. I pushed her back. For seven years, every day, she graduated from high school. She then went to a community college close to Austin. I pushed her every weekend around campus. And then she moved close to my wife and I in Austin. And don't get mad, but every Sunday, I would push her and we would listen to the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and we would eat Whataburgers <laughs> every Sunday. I was in the bed when she passed away. And I learned a huge lesson. All these years, I thought I had been pushing her. She had been pushing me. Everybody needs a coach. She used to tell me, I tell Judy, you don't have to have legs to fly. At some point, America needs to know that we got to quit building the partisan ships. We have to build a ship of state again. And you know what we'll do if, we'll, if America will play to her strength? America needs strength finders. We need coaches because our strength is we were born different. It basically, was, we were born to say, and it's not all good, it's not, but we were born differently. It did not matter where you came from or what your last name was. If you're willing to risk the high seas and dream big and work hard, if you can dream it, you can build it. Do good and be happy. Think about this. Well, then how do you know how to do that? Aristotle said it the best, too. This is where coaches come in, by the way. Aristotle has this great line, and we use it all the time, where your talents, you could put strengths, and the needs of the world intersect. Where your strengths and the needs of the world intersect, therein lies your purpose. Eighth grade, you remember cursive? Okay. Turning in a paper that you actually had to take in the class. You didn't get to do it at home. I turned it on Emerson, who's one of my favorites. And I got it back two days later, and there are eight misspelled words. Big C minus on my paper. C's were not celebrated at my home. My mom didn't say anything. Next year, I'm in the ninth grade. Now, remember... I'm studying English again, but I remember her name, the teacher. Her name was Mrs. Levesey, 
And I said to my mom, I can't take the test because I'll make another C. She said, do the best you can. Turned it in. There were 11 misspelled words. 11, not 8. The whole thing was red. And it had a tiny A- minus at the top. So I went home and I put the, you remember kitchen tables? <laughs> I put the two tests in front of my mom and I said, I, I don't get it. And she said, you can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> but you can write. And at 14 years old, the grand bargain was struck with Roy Spence, with my mom. She said, I, don't want you, I do not want you to spend another second of your life trying to be average at what you're bad at. This is 14 years old. I want you to spend the rest of your life becoming great at what you're good at. When you let people play to their strengths, they become a force of nature. This is what this movement's about, coaching. By the way, God made us all different. And we judge our kids on standardized tests. So, this is bigger than all of us. We are not in the business of changing the world. We're in the business of changing people, and then they go change the world. God gave me a gift of life. My sister gave me a gift, a coaching gift of you don't have to have legs to fly. My mom gave me a coaching gift of become great at what you're good at. My partners gave me a coaching gift of we're better together. Don Clifton gave me a gift. Play to your strengths. 